Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a flip through as well as a review of the Saxon Math K program that my kindergartner finished back in December. So make sure that you stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you our take on it, pros and cons about the kindergarten program after I do the flip through. A few things about the overview of Saxon Math. The format of Saxon Math is an incremental development or a spiral approach. And what that means is that basically each concept builds up on the next. So they may give you parts of the concept and then they'll review those for a few lessons and then they'll add on to that concept and it just kind of works its way through just like that the opposite of a spiral approach is going to be your mastery approach which is basically you go over the same concept over and over and over and over and over again until you get it and then you move on to another concept there are lots of math curricula that do that type of learning so you will find the spiral and mastery and saxon math k is a spiral approach Okay, what do you get when you get Saxon Math K? You are going to get this massive <laughs> teacher's guide, okay? This is to help you teach your child. You will also get, if you purchase it new, um, like you can get it from Ardell, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it from Rainbow Resources, ChristianBooks.com, so many places where you can get the Saxon Math curriculum. There is a meeting book. This meeting book, in the beginning, it goes over calendar, time, shapes, dates, uh, days of the week, months of the year for your child. That is considered the meeting book. For Saxon Math K, we did not use the meeting book. I did not even buy the meeting book because we were already doing some form of calendar work anyway, and I just wanted to keep us flowing with that. Another thing, you can buy this used on like the Facebook Marketplace. I bought this teacher's manual on the Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. Brand new, unused, nothing disturbed about it other than it had been opened. It had been used, but you, you couldn't tell. Um, and I got it for $20. So I'll talk later on about the full curriculum cost when I'm going through that, but definitely you can find it lots of places for lots of different costs for exactly what you are needing. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys inside the book and walk you through just a flip through of the curriculum. Remember, stick around because at the end, I'm gonna share with you our pros and cons after using it for a semester. Okay guys, here is the Saxon Math K book. This is your teacher's edition, teacher's guide for home study. Saxon Math also has a study that's like for classroom. So make sure that if you're getting this, you're making sure that you get the home study. With this, if you buy it brand new, you will also get the meeting book. But as I said before, we did not use the meeting book, but it simply has calendar things in it, dates, times, um, the weather, things like that for your child to go over. So once you open your book, it gives you an overview of the study. It talks about it being um, incremental and a spiral approach, some of the things that they will go over. It also gives you the two parts, which I said are the meeting and then the lesson, which is how the lessons will go, and I will show you that. It also gives you a list down here of just some things that you probably already have around your home that you will use throughout the year. These are like your staples that you'll need throughout the year. Next, you'll have your table of content and it tells you what each lesson is going over, the main focus of that lesson. There are a total of 113 or 14 lessons, if I'm not mistaken. Oops, 112 lessons. That includes the assessment. So like this says lesson 112, this is also assessment number 14. And there are 14 assessments within this curriculum. So, and then it talks about the appendix there, our oral assessment recording forms, four pages. You have student masters, which is 37 pages, and then handwriting, which is 27 pages. And I'll show you guys those at the back of the book. As you're going through, here is your master list of materials. This tells you everything that you'll need for each lesson. For example, lesson one, you need a, ba a basket of pattern blocks. You can use whatever type of pattern material you might have. Lesson 11, a basket of teddy bear counters. We used monkeys. We have a monkey balance game and we just use monkeys for that. I did not buy any teddy bears. We also already had pattern blocks. Um, there's another one you will use linking cubes, which are really good to have. Even my older girls use linking cubes. So that may be something that you want to invest in. Here we have red, yellow, green, blue, pink, orange uh, construction paper. Those are all things that you would have at home. We use bears or like I said, we use the monkeys, but it calls for those teddy bears a lot throughout the curriculum. 
So for every single lesson, it gives you what you need. Then you get directly into your lessons. The format for the lessons is the same for every single lesson. You will have here this gray box, which is your lesson preparation. It will tell you materials you need and what you do in the morning. There are also times where it tells you the night before it will tell you what to do. So I'll show you that. Then you go through your meeting. This is scripted for you. It tells you the light um, writing is or typing is open the meeting book to September's calendar. That is not something that you will read to your child. Everything that is in bold is what you will say to your child. So it says, this is called a calendar. We use a calendar to tell us the month, year, day of the week, and the date. Then it tells you, point to the month, year, days of the week, and the date. So it's giving you scripted information for you to teach the lesson to your child. You will also, here is more of the meeting time and then you get into your lesson. Lesson number one, you can see it's very short, but you're exploring pattern blocks. Basically within this lesson, you're simply taking out the pattern blocks and you're getting your child familiar with those pattern blocks. You are also creating time frames, letting them know, okay, I'm going to give you a specific time to play with these. Okay, now we have a couple more minutes. It's time to put the pattern blocks away, but don't worry, you'll get to use those pattern blocks again. So it really is helping to develop your child's understanding of what it is to do math, how lessons may go in case they've never done any lessons. And this is kindergarten, so most children have not. You go here, the lessons are the same. And the lessons do progress in length as you go throughout the curriculum. The same things, tells you what to do in the morning, you're filling out things for your meeting time. When it says meeting, you get the meeting book out. That is basically the format for every single lesson. Let me find a spot here. Lesson number 10, it gives you your lesson preparation. It tells you what you need. This says Master K10. What you will do is flip to the back of the book and here's where all of the different sheets are. And as you can see, this says Master 20. So you will go to Master K, which is kindergarten, 10. Let's see if I can find it here, there. What I did was just make copies. If there was something that I needed back here, I didn't cut it out, but you can if you're wanting to use your book. And I just make copies of whatever was needed. So it will tell you in the lesson what you're needing. This says you need Master K10, you need some envelopes, and you need a basket of teddy bear counters. Then it gives you instructions the night before. This is so that you're prepared to teach the lesson to your child when it's time. It asks for each family member. You're supposed to ask each one of your family members to choose their favorite color teddy bear, put each bear in an envelope labeled with the family member's names. I did a lot of improvising on things like this. Um, I would make it up, <laughs> you know, make up different family members' names. I did not waste envelopes. Um, it all just depends on how deep you want to get it, but she got this concept and understood it even with me improvising. So she was still able to understand what she was supposed to do and execute the lesson effectively. Um, and then it goes to your in the morning. Once again, you get your meeting time and then you go to your lesson. And at the end of the lesson, it still tells you here, K10, you know, just to reinforce what you're gonna be needing for that lesson. That is pretty much the format of all of the lessons. It gives you a title, so you're acting out story problems. It's gonna tell you what it is that you need to do. This lesson, as you can see, is pretty lengthy in comparison to what we've seen. And that is lesson number 20. As you go along, the lessons do get more in depth um, and they also build on each other. So we started with patterns. Now you're creating and reading an AB color pattern. Still going back to acting out story problems. This is the spiral approach that Saxon uses. Identifying the most and fewest on a graph and then you have an assessment. So when you go to an assessment, you still have your meeting time and it goes through everything that you need to do for meeting time. And your assessment is really short and it'll simply tell you, arrange four unconnected blue linking cubes in a row. Then you're gonna tell your child, count the cubes in this row. Once they count them, you're gonna make another row of cubes that's the same as the row of cubes, as the row of cubes that you made. You're gonna have your child make that. And then how do you know that they're the same? And your child's just gonna answer that question. That's it, the assessment is done. On the assessment sheets, when you do the assessment, you can go back here and you have your assessment recording forms and you can, let me find it here. So oral assessment, lesson 27. That's where we were just here, lesson 27. So your oral assessment, and you're gonna simply put here if your child was able to do it or not. You put the date and they're all here. So it says arrange them, count the cubes in a row. If they do it, yes, 
what their answers are, yes, and it's done. That's how I recorded those forms. Make sure that they're able to get it. You can put a check mark, complete, correct, incorrect. You can add notes, however you choose to do it. I did not actually use the recording forms, but we did do the assessment. Here we are back to pattern blocks. That is how each lesson goes. Night before, it's giving you activity. So there is some preparation that you'll need to do in some of the lessons. It just depends on what it is. A lot of times I was just able to go to our homeschool room and find what was needed. Here's a little bit more preparation where you have to cut things out. We're doing eye color, working on pictographs. That is essentially it. So as we go to the back of the book, I've already shown you the oral assessment recording forms and that's for each oral assessment and then you have your master sheet as you go through the lessons it will tell you when you need a master sheet this one is for master k kindergarten lesson 14a and then here is 14b so at the top it tells you what lesson you need the master sheets for it has everything that you need a lot of times like these here she had to cover them with the different patterns I just pulled our patterns out and she covered it right here on this sheet. I did not even make a copy of it. This right here is a geo board. We have geo boards all over the place. She could have drawn it if you didn't have a geo board, that is an option. But I just pulled our geo boards out and just let her play around with it and make the shapes that it was asking for in lesson 76. So as you get further back, after you get past the master sheets, you get into your handwriting masters and it tells you which lesson to use it with. So master one, which is your handwriting, is to be used after lesson number 42. And it tells you exactly what you're working on. So this is a lot of working with numbers. Uh, we did already have a handwriting curriculum that we were using. So I did not use hardly any of these, but they are really great for your child as far as numbers. Then they get to start drawing their own shapes and triangles. And here we have write the numbers on the cards. That was another thing. There are games within the lesson. So my daughter learned how to play cards. She learned how to play dominoes. She learned how to play war and what these numbers, you know, how to identify the numbers that should be on the cards. That was a part of the lessons as we moved along. Also, they work with time. We had a clock. Um, and the time was a part of the meeting that was done at the beginning with the meeting book. So you're working on weather and dates and time all of those so we pulled out a clock and she was able to work on time so that is the flip through of saxon math k all right guys so some of the things that we liked about the curriculum i did write it down because i did not want to forget so i wanted to make sure that i shared everything with you but the first thing that i really like about it is that it gives you a materials list it shares with you with each lesson everything that you're going to need at the beginning of the book so that you can prepare majority of the items were things that we had around our home anyway we also are manipulative junkies here so we had tons of manipulatives as i said before there is a kit that you can purchase with all of the manipulatives that you need but if you're anything like me you're going to have a lot of that stuff at home or you can just improvise and make use of what you have and not have to spend the money for the kit the kit does go from kindergarten up to a third grade so if you're looking to have your child use sex and math all the way up to third grade you might want to invest in the kit totally a personal choice of yours and that brings me to the next thing is I really love the manipulatives. I like the use of that. It was great. It was hands-on for my daughter. She enjoyed it. Um, it was something fun that we can do and it really didn't seem like math for her at the level K. Some other pros is that, as you saw before, it gives you exactly what to say. It's scripted. Now, did I go you know, word for word based on what they said? No. A lot of times I would read through the script beforehand and then I would just paraphrase and put it in my own words to where it was like a super relaxed I felt like if I was like looking back and forth at what exactly they said it kind of would throw me off so I would just read through the script the day before or before we started that day and then it made it super easy for me to know where we're starting and what the lesson the direction that the lesson was going in so that was very easy and it's very helpful to have that and you have it for every single lesson another pro is that it was just fun it was a fun curriculum to go through we enjoyed it um some other things in the back of the book i showed you guys the handwriting there are different handwriting prompts now we did not use a whole lot of them but 
it was helpful for my daughter to use some. I just simply made copies of it. I did not tear anything out of this book. Um, only if I needed anything, I just made copies of it. It was just easier to do it that way. And maybe I could possibly gift it to someone or resell it and I don't have to worry about it being disturbed. It was just nice to have that handwriting in the back of the book available for you. I also like that it had oral assessments and these are just assessments for you to give your child to kind of figure out if they grasp the concept that you guys have gone over, but it's just oral. You just talk to your child, conversation piece, hey, can you put these two things together or can you tell me which tower is tallest? Just very simple assessment just to really see if your child is getting it. But you're gonna know that even without the assessments, but I just like that they had them available if you wanted to use them. Some of the things that people may find there are con, which I got a hack for this, <laughs> is that if you buy this curriculum brand new with this book and with the meeting book, you're gonna spend about $120 brand new for two books. I, as I said, I didn't do that. <laughs> I was I was not gonna do that. So $20 and we got a curriculum and it was awesome. Another kind that I may have come across that I feel like for us is that it was, it was fairly easy for my daughter. Uh, as I said, we went through all 112 lessons in a semester. She started in at the, at the end of August and she finished mid December. Um, it was fairly easy for her and that's okay. I knew that it would be as I was going into it. Um, and I shared her in a video at the beginning of the school year when we were talking about curriculum that I knew that it would be fairly easy for her to go through it. But because we're going into Saxon, I wanted to make sure that she was comfortable with the format and how the lessons were going to go because now we're in Saxon one and she loves it. And it's great. She's accustomed to the format and us sitting down and doing a formal math with her and it's working out really good for us. So for me, it's not so much a con, um, it was worth our time to do that. And she went through pretty quickly, like sometimes three lessons in one day. It just depends on what the concept was and where she was in her, in her math skills. Another thing that some may find a problem, I don't at this age, but I wanna share with you everything, all of the possibilities that it is teacher intensive. There is no way that your kindergartner could go through this math curriculum on their own. So if you're looking for something that your child can possibly do on their own, you would probably want to navigate towards an online math curriculum where they are reading the things to them and they have to select certain things. But at this age, I really want to be hands-on with my girls. And so for me, it was not a problem, but it is teacher intensive. You are sitting there with your child, navigating the entire lesson with them until maybe they get to a point to where they can. I, I really didn't see that happen within this curriculum for my daughter. Um, I could give her instructions and say, I want you to count out this many things, do that. And there would be a, a brief moment in time where I'm not having to direct her because she could already do those skills. So it just depends on how involved you're wanting to be with your child's math, but this Saxon Math K is definitely teacher intensive. As I said before, my daughter, this was fairly easy for her. However, overall, we really enjoyed the curriculum. It was fun. It was engaging for her. One of my biggest things is that, number one, I didn't want to create any gaps for her. Now, I know that gaps can occur in any aspect, but this spiral approach works for her. Also, I didn't want to just skip over one uh, over Saxon K and go directly to one because I knew that there were some concepts within the Saxon Math K curriculum that she really didn't she had not mastered. She didn't know them completely going from the curriculum that we were using prior to that, which was mostly play with learning, but that's what they need at this age. She still needs the play at this age. However, what this curriculum did do for her was it really helped to build her confidence. She is so confident in her Saxon Math 1 right now. There are also worksheets that go along with Saxon 1 and she can just, I, I will read it to her because she's not able to read just yet, but I will read to her what she's supposed to do and she just goes through and does it. And I believe that us going through Saxon K and working through that process has made her a lot more comfortable and it's helped really build her confidence within this curriculum. So I hope this review was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and I'll see you next time.